Let's focus in on how this impacts consumers. For that, we bring in Ron Knox. He's a senior researcher and writer at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance and their foremost antitrust expert. Sounds like we got the right person. Ron, this lawsuit alleges Amazon deters sellers from offering their products at a lower cost on other sites. Break this down for us. How exactly does that work? Sure. Well, look, the crucial thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about the price of goods uh, on Amazon or elsewhere on the web is Amazon's monopoly power uh, over online shopping. It's the exact you know, subject matter of the FTC's complaint. Half of all online sales happen on Amazon, uh, even more for other products. So if you're a small business, you have to be there, right? That's where the customers are, where the shoppers are. And with that kind of power, Amazon essentially does two things uh, according to the lawsuit and according to our own research. The sellers that are there have to pay whatever fees Amazon says they have to pay uh, in order to have their products show up uh, on the search listings in a way where shoppers can see them. And then the sellers also have to give Amazon the lowest price. That's part of the deal when you sell there. Um, or if you don't, Amazon will threaten to and indeed will bury your products uh, in the search results so that shoppers never see them. So what's the result of all this? The FTC says uh, sellers essentially have to raise their prices on Amazon in order to afford these exorbitant fees. And then it has to export those same high prices to every other website uh, on the web, including the seller's own websites. Um, and so even if the seller wants to, it cannot sell for anywhere less. Um, that's the monopoly power at issue in the lawsuit. And it's the kind of thing that hurts the sellers and the shoppers, uh, but Amazon makes a killing. Yeah, uh, and we know these sellers aren't the only part of this equation here. There are likely a lot of folks at home listening to this news and, and probably developing their own thoughts and opinions and attitudes about Amazon and continuing to use Amazon. How, how exactly does this affect consumer attitudes or, or does it? It's a great question. I mean, I think that the allegations, the facts, uh, you know, in the lawsuit is, as the FTC lays it out, it creates and it builds this kind of myth around Amazon's low prices, right? The kind of thing that from, I mean, it looks at this point like an illusion. Um, we know from the lawsuit and from elsewhere that most shoppers don't even shop around. Uh, if you're, uh, you know, a prime member, over 200 million households at this point are prime members. That is your first and likely only, uh, you know, destination when you're looking for goods uh, for around the house and people just assume that they're going to get the lowest price. And even if they do shop around, the lawsuit says that because of Amazon's monopoly stranglehold over, over the sellers, over the companies, those lower prices that should be there, they don't even exist. So the consumers say, hey, <laughs> you know, Amazon's the price leader here. Um, that's where we're going to get all of our stuff. And it serves to, uh, you know, to reinforce the monopoly power uh, at issue in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. What is the potential threat for other retailers if Amazon maintains its dominance here? I mean, if Amazon maintains its dominance, the, the you know the conduct that the lawsuit alleges, which is that Amazon forces uh, you know the, the same high prices that appear on its site to appear around the web, that's going to continue. And so, if you're a rival marketplace or you want to get uh, into that market, or or even if you're just a small business that wants to sell things online, you know that you cannot actually sell your product for less than. Um, what it appears on Amazon. And so, the, you know, if you're, if you're a rival marketplace, how else do you win business other than offering the lowest price or, or, or the best service? And, and at the moment, because of Amazon's power in the market, they simply can't do that. So that kind of price competition doesn't really exist. Those other marketplaces don't really exist or they don't gain a foothold. And, and, and you see this, you know, this monopoly power and these alleged monopoly abuses uh, contained in the lawsuit continue. Antitrust expert Ron Knox, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate your time.